All right, good morning, everyone. Y'all doing good? Y'all doing all right? So I have a handout for you today. Um, please take one of these. We're not, we're not going to start talking about this yet, but we will do it today. Um, but I just want to get it around now. It's in color. Not that fancy. So last class we were, uh, we got in chapter seven and we were talking about trying to find the area between, the, the area of a region between two or, two or three curves or however many curves we have, right? And we want to finish that up. Um, I also showed you how to use your calculator to be able to sketch functions of y instead of x. Did anybody happen to go by the, the lab and pick up a graphing calculator? You did? It, was it easy or? Yeah, you have to uh, like request it and then you get pre approved and you have to have to go and fill out the award. Okay. It's not at the lab anymore. It's, at it's the not? Lab, I guess it's 30, 308. I think it's a 308. You went to 316 first? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so do you have it? So did it, did it all happen in one session? Or uh, did you have to go back? I requested an access uh, about a week before. Okay. And they responded back fairly quickly. They didn't have time to go Okay. Back. So it can be done. Anyone who needs a graphing calculator wants to use it, you have access to it, all right? Go to 308, room 308. Okay. Um, now. We are going to finish this up. <clears throat> We're getting to 7.2 after this. So um, I, I'm going to do what I did last time. I'm going to keep this on. That way we can see it right here. And then I'm going to work over there. Unfortunately, that's the best I can do. Um, so we want to sketch this region bounded by x equals y to the fourth, x equals square root of 2 minus y, y is greater than or equal to 0. So this is where you would have to go into that parametric mode on your calculator if you wanted to graph this. So do you all want me to bring up the calculator and do it, or do you want me just to use Desmos and what do you all want? Desmos. You want it? Desmos calculator? Calculator. Calculator. Okay, so let me bring up the calculator. figure out where I put it. There it is. All right, so there's my little emulator here. And you all see that OK? I just posted the video this morning. I forgot to do it last week. I uploaded it, but then I forgot to put it on, like make it live. And uh, it comes out eh, OK on the camera. All right, so what I'm going to do here, um, thank you, is I'm going to make sure that I'm in the correct mode here. I am in parametric mode. Clear this. I'm going to go to y equals. Let me clear this. I'm going to, I'm going to have to clear all these. These are my old ones. It's a little harder to do it with a mouse. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to first graph this first one. I want to do x equals y to the fourth. So this here x is a function of y, right? So the way I'm going to type that in there is I'm going to put x one t y one t. Anyone want to tell me what I'm going to do? X equals t to the fourth and y equals t. So what you're saying here is if this y is t, right, if that y is t, then x is that t to the fourth power. And so that's what I'm going to type in. And then also make sure that you um, have your window set. Let me do that after I do this. So I'm going to type in the x. When I hit the x variable, it, it knows I'm in parametric, so it puts a t there, raised to the fourth and then hit enter, and then now for the y1, I put just t, and then just hit graph. Yeah, my window's messed up. So what I'm gonna do now, well actually, you know what, it's not bad. Yeah, I have t, t is between negative 10 and 10, that's fine. 
Um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to zoom. Oh, yeah, this thing is annoying. I'm going to zoom out from the origin. Let me move over here. So when you hit zoom out, it brings up a little cursor. You move it around to where you want to zoom out from. And then hit enter. OK, so I mean, I have the basic shape of it, right? I have the basic shape of it. So it looks something like this. I'm going to start doing my graphs here. I'll do this one in blue. So it looks something like this, right? This is my x equals y to the fourth. Now I need to do x equals the square root of 2 minus y. So this, on my calculator, I'm going to do x 2t, y 2t. And again, this will just be t. y will always be t when you're uh, graphing uh, functions of y. Just y is t. And then x, if that's t, then x must be the square root of 2 minus t. There we go. So that's what I'm going to put in for the second one. So I go back to the y equals. And make sure I move back down. There we go. So this will be square root, second key, 2 minus the t variable, hit enter, and then just t, and hit enter. And graph. There it is. So it looks kind of like this. All right, this is x equals the square root of 2 minus y. You all good? And then finally, we have this right here. y is greater than or equal to 0. So that's actually, well, you could look at it as a graph, but, but that's actually giving me a restriction that my y values, right, up and down, have to be from 0 and higher. So you can almost look at that as like the x-axis. That's y equals 0. And anything above. So do you all see that forces us to be looking at this region right there? That is the region bounded <clears throat> by all three of those conditions. All right, so when I look at that region, I have to determine whether or not I'm going to do vertical rectangles or horizontal. And we normally do vertical if we're looking at functions of x. These are not functions of x, right? These are functions of y. So we, we're going to use horizontal most likely. And so I can kind of imagine in here that if I put a horizontal rectangle like this, Right? If I look at that rectangle over here, I can see and convince myself that <clears throat> as long as that rectangle moves up and down through that region, that the red, the red um, function will always be on the right side, right? and the blue one will always be on the left side, and that will always happen no matter where that rectangle is placed. Right? So now I can just go to the formula. The formula says that to do this area, right, to do that area, the area will be equal to the integral from somewhere to somewhere. We'll figure that out. But then it's going to be the right endpoint or the right part of the rectangle, right side, minus the left side. So the right side is which function? Square root of 2 minus y and then minus the left side of the rectangle, which is the y to the fourth. <clears throat> and you all remember where I'm getting that from? Let, let me just re reiterate this again. Um, this is my rectangle. The y-axis is here, right? That's my y-axis right there. And so what I'm trying to do is figure out how, how long this rectangle is so I can figure out like the area of that. So to figure out how long it is, I first figure out how long that is, right? Which happens to be square root of 2 minus y, and then I subtract from that this distance from here to here, which is the y to the fourth. And so if I take that and subtract that, that's how wide it is. And then how tall it is is what? D, in this case, dy, because my y variable, I'm, I'm moving that rectangle up and down instead of up and down instead of left and right. If it's left and right with a vertical rectangle, we're using dx. But going up and down, it's dy. So that thickness of this is dy. So that's why I need a dy at the end of this, because that's the thickness of the rectangle. 
What's the last thing I need? <clears throat> the, yeah, the, the points, the, the limits of integration, right? These two numbers, we need these. And since we're integrating with respect to y, right, dy, these are going to be the y values where we start and stop. I think it's obvious that this, these rectangles will start at zero, right? But they stop where these two intersect each other. I need to figure out what that is. So how do I figure out what that is? Set the two curves equal to one another, right? If this is equal to x and this is equal to x, set them equal to one another and we will find their intersection. Okay, so I know that this is zero, and now the intersection. Any questions while I'm erasing here? Intersection. So the intersection, I take y to the fourth, I set it equal to square root of two minus y. Okay, uh, well, how do you solve that? Square both sides, right? Square both sides. So if you square the left side, you get y to the eighth, right? Because you're doing four and multiplying by two, right? And then over here, you square the square root, it goes away. And then you bring everything over to one side. And then you look at that and you go, shit. You're like, whoa, I have no idea how to solve this, right? Well. I look at it for a little while. It's not a quadratic, right? And it's not a quadratic type either. To be a quadratic type, you would actually need a 4 here. And then you can look at it like a quadratic, but this is not a quadratic type. So right now, we actually do not have a method to solve this. We don't, we don't, there's nothing that we have in our, in our arsenal of solving equations to be able to solve this. Now, there is a section in, uh, in Cal 1 called Newton's Method where you can, and I know in my Cal 1 class I just tell you about it, it's an algorithm and then we can use that and that's how computers solve equations. But for us, we really don't have an algebraic way of solving this. And this comes up in your homework problems as well. So what they expect you to do at this point is to solve it by inspection, by just looking, right? By just guessing almost. And if you look at this and you look at your, well the graphs, the computer already shut off. Um, any, any guesses? as to what y has to be? One. If you, if you plug in one here, what happens? Two minus one? One. one. Square root of one is one. one. And then what's one to the fourth? One. one. So if this happens on your homework, right, or a test where you ha can't solve the equation, you have to kind of guess, it, it's going to be a good number. Like, it's going to be a nice number. It's not going to be like 1.2567 or some like weird, you know, square root of three or something. It'll be the expectation is that it's something easy, right? So we don't know how to do this, but we're going to say, well, oh, y is 1, right, by inspection. So that means our integral goes from 0 to 1. And then from there, you can solve that integral, all right? We could do these one by one, right? Do that one, do that one. This one's easy, right? Power rule, 1 fifth, y to the fifth. This one, don't, I know that you want to say trig sub. Don't say trig sub, because that y is not squared. This is just basic u sub. If you just let u be 2 minus y, you'll be able to work that integral out. So I'm not going to show the work for that. I'm just going to leave it there. Put dot, dot, dot. You could solve that given more time. Yes? OK. The important part is the setup. I would say that you know, we're at a point you know, where what we want to do is we want to translate the word problem, or we want to translate the problem into the math, and then for the math, we could always use a computer to do that. But nowadays, you can probably go and just verbally put this into a computer, like find the area between these, and I don't know, what do you think? You think we're there yet? You think if I said, if I went to some AI and just said, hey, sketch the region, or uh, um, find, the re find the area of the region bounded by these? Maybe, I don't know. Okay, we're moving on. Next example. Sketch the region, region bounded by y equals x to the fourth, y equals x to the sixth, x is greater than or equal to zero. For this one, you do not need the parametric mode on your calculator, right? You do not need it. But I told you last class, you can stay in parametric mode and continue to use it now 
You never have to switch back to the other mode. You can just type it in <clears throat> and it will graph it. So I just want to go through is how do we type these in? If we do y equals x to the fourth and y equals x to the sixth, the way we would type this into our calculator is kind of the opposite of what we just did, right? This time we want x to be t and then the y would be that t to the fourth t to the fourth. And then this one would be the same thing. This would be um, x2t would be t, and y2t would be t to the sixth. And you should get the graph. Okay? What I think is interesting about this graph is that, and I think I am going to use Desmos for this one, because I want to be able to uh, go faster here. y equals x to the fourth y equals x to the sixth. Those are the two graphs right there, right? So the reason I put this example on there is just to remind everyone of something that a common mistake people make. And that is, if I tell you that, let's say I give you a number, okay? Let's say I give you a number and, I, and I, then I tell you to square it. Does that number get bigger? It could, right? Like if I gave you the number two and squared it, it becomes four, it gets bigger, right? If I give you the number three and I say squared, it becomes bigger, right? Nine? Is that always the case? No, what if I gave you the, the number one half? What happens if you square one half? It becomes one fourth, doesn't it? It actually gets smaller. So just because you square a number doesn't mean it gets bigger. That, the number has to be bigger than one for that to happen. If it's bigger than one, then when you square it, it'll get bigger. So the point is, when you look at this, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, when you graph these, this graph should be bigger than this graph, or in other words, above it, as long as x is bigger than one. But if x is smaller than one, raising something to the sixth makes it smaller, raising something to the fourth makes it smaller, and this makes it even, this makes it even smaller than this one. So when you look at the graph of, of this, do you see that to the right of one? Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna cheat here. I'm gonna stretch this out. And I'm gonna open this up. No, uh, yeah, I think that's the best I'm gonna be able to. There we go. Do you see that between, like after one, right? After one, the blue one is on top. The blue one for us here is the x to the sixth. And that makes sense, that once you get past one, the blue one's on top. But between zero and one, right, between zero and one, the red one's on top. So the x to the fourth is actually above the x to the sixth between zero and one. I just want to make sure everyone's clear on that. So we are trying to find the area of the region bounded by these two curves, right? And there was one more condition. What was the other condition? x was greater than, zero. greater than or equal to zero. x was greater than or equal to zero. So if you look at this graph, do you see we have two regions? We have this one and this one, bounded by these two curves. So if, if you're also given x must be greater than or equal to zero, we're talking about this region right here, between those two. So let me, again, zoom in here, stretch this out so you can really see this. That's the region we're talking about right there, okay? We want to find the area of that region. So the, the first thing, I guess, the good news is that to do this, we, we definitely know the limits of integration, don't we? What are the limits of integration? Just by the picture and by our discussion. Zero to one, Zero to one right? Zero to one. Oh, um, I didn't mention vertical rectangles. Vertical rectangles, I should have, I should have said that. Uh, let me do my red one on top. I thought it was obvious, but I'll state it. So here are the two curves. I'm exaggerating what it looks like there, right? So zero here, and then this right here is one. Okay, we have a vertical rectangle in here. The f and so for the area, we do the function on top minus the function on the bottom. And the function on top for us is x to the fourth minus the one on the bottom, which is x to the sixth, and then the width of the rectangle. 
So we take that top distance, subtract the bottom distance, that gives us this, and then the width of it is dx. And then that integral, I think, is pretty straightforward. Would you agree? OK, any questions? I'm moving on. Sketch the region bounded by the absolute value of x, y equals x squared minus 2, and then find the um, area. So I'm going to try and do this one without the calculator. I'm just going to do it using my knowledge of functions. And I would expect that as Cal 2 students, you would all be comfortable with what those two look like without a calculator. So let's do y equals um, absolute value of x, and then the other one, y equals x squared minus 2. All right. So color-wise, let's go with the red as the absolute value of x. That'll be, it looks like a V, right? A sharp corner V right there. That's the absolute value of x. And then x squared minus 2, that's a parabola, right? It's just been moved down 2. It's not flipped over, right? So it's a parabola that would have opened up like that, but we moved it down 2. So it starts here, negative 2, and it goes up. And it's going to hit that somewhere, right? It's going to hit that. OK. So vertical rectangles because these are functions of x, right? So we have vertical rectangles like that. Imagine anywhere that rectangle is, it's always going to be the red on top of the blue, right? All right, um, let's see if we can't set up this integral. I'll worry about the limits of integration in a second. What's the top function? The absolute value of x minus and then the bottom one, x squared minus 2. That must be in parentheses, right, because you're subtracting it. And then all of that dx. OK. We need to know where they hit each other, don't we? Can we do it by inspection? I don't know if, if it'll. I'm not sure we're going to be able to get that by inspection, are we? Yeah? What do you think? What works? Two? Oh, OK, but we're not, be careful, because we're not doing horizontal rectangles. So we're not going from here. We're going from left to right. So inspection, two. Two works. Two here, absolute value of two is two. Two squared is four minus two. Yeah, two works, right? And probably negative two as well. So by inspection, I can see it's negative two and two, right? OK, now there's a reason why I gave you this example. The reason I gave you this example is because what if you couldn't tell, right, by inspection, how to do that? That's the first thing. How, do you, how would you set these equal to one another? That's the first question. The second question is, what's the antiderivative of the absolute value of x? We have not done that, have we? We have not ever talked about what the antiderivative of the absolute value of x is. It's not just the absolute value of 1 half x squared. Okay, so we need to actually talk about this a little bit, all right? Okay? So let's do this. When I look at this problem, I realize I'm going to run into some trouble here, right? I realize I'm going to run into some trouble there. Um, do you all see the symmetry of this problem? Do you all see the symmetry? Would it be fair if I said, instead of doing the area of the whole thing, why don't we just find the area here and double the answer? Is that all right with you? Yeah, because if I do that, then what is my red function? Do I really have to say absolute value of x anymore? What can I just say? x, right? That's x. By the way, what's, what's this function right here? <clears throat> it's not x, it's what? Negative x. So if this goes back to the definition of the absolute value of x. The absolute value of x is actually a piecewise function. It's defined to be two different things. If your x is from 0 to the right, then this red function is just x. 
But if you're to the left of zero, so if you're over here, it's just negative x. So that's the definition of absolute value of x. I covered that in 1414, like three weeks ago, right? So this is what the definition of the absolute value of x is. So what I'm doing is I'm using the fact that I, that I know this to just go from here over, right, instead, from here over. So my integral is going to go from 0 to 2, right, instead. And I'm going to double this answer. I have to double the answer so I can get the other side. Do I count that area as well? And now, instead of putting absolute value of x, I'm going to put x. And then minus the other function, x squared minus 2, dx. <clears throat> Right. I'm going to do that because <clears throat> I know how to take the antiderivative of everything there. Also, if you did not know, like if we couldn't figure out that it was 2, right? We just looked and it was 2. If you're only over here and you're trying to find this intersection point, then you're actually not setting the absolute value of x equal to this. You're setting x equal to x squared minus 2, right? Because to the right, over here, that is, again, that's just the x function, or the function x. And now you can, <clears throat> you can move everything over, and uh, this factors, and then you get two solutions. One of them, right, one of them doesn't work. Distribute where here? Yeah. Oh, I will. Yeah. If if I actually want to solve this, I would I would distribute the negative through. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. You could distribute a negative, then, do the then do the antiderivative. Yeah, that's what I would do for sure. If I were going to do this, my next step would be x minus x squared plus two integral, and then I would just do each one separately. <clears throat> So this gave me two answers, right? Two and negative one. Two is this answer. Negative one is back here. It thinks that this red line continues. It doesn't know that it stops. So it's giving me that intersection point back here, but we're not looking over there, right? So that's our only answer. All right, so whatever that answer is, that would be the area, right? Okay, I'm not ready to talk about, I will talk about what the antiderivative of the absolute value of x is, but it'll sidetrack us too much right now, right? Like in general, right? In general, like what's the antiderivative of the, the absolute value of something? We'll, we'll table that for now. All right, this last one I always offer as a bonus question. There's, it's not that it's hard or anything, it's just, you know, why not? So if you want, you can turn that in. Uh, let's say next class. That's all I'm going to give you is that. I'll let you go play with the graphs and figure out what it looks like. Sketch the region. So I want, I want you to actually include a sketch. If you want, you can get real fancy with this. You can go on Desmos. You can graph it. You can copy it, print it. You know, give me a nice little print it out graph, however you want to do it, right? Turn this in next class, all right? All right, we are done with this section, I think. Ah, there was one more. I think we get it. Let's just, let's just talk through this one. Sketch the region, region bounded by y equals uh, e to the x, y equals 2 e to the negative x plus 1, and x equals 2. So I go and I graph all of those. There they are. There's the graphs. Do you see the region there? Vertical rectangles, is that obvious to you? It, I mean, they were functions of x, weren't they? So vertical rectangles moving through here, right? This one is e to the x. This one is the 2 e to the negative x plus 1. And this is x equals 2. So the only thing really that we would have to figure out is where these hit each other. That would be the hardest part of this problem, OK? The hard, hardest part of that problem, there are the functions. Let me zoom this out a little bit. Yeah, it's a little hard to see, but this, this blue one 
is 2e to the negative x plus 1. This red one is e to the x. So I know my integral is going to go e to the x minus, that's the top one, bottom one is uh, 2 e to the negative x plus 1. So that's top minus bottom. It's dx because I have vertical rectangles. And then my right endpoint is 2. That's the x equals 2. That's where I stop my rectangles. So I have to figure out where they hit each other. So to figure out the intersection, I have to solve this equation. e to the x equals 2e to the negative x plus 1. And so I think that might be worth it for us to talk about how you would solve that. How would you solve that? There's a couple of different ways. So let me show you, okay? This is, this is the way that I would approach this. So what I would see here is that this is the same as 2 over e to the x plus 1. You all agree? And then what I would do is I'd multiply both sides of the equation by e to the x to clear the fractions out. So I'm going to multiply this side of the equation by e to the x and multiply this side by e to the x as well. What's e to the x times e to the x? I'm going to, uh, I'll do it right here. Remember, this was the integral we were working on here. We were trying to find this lower limit here. So this is e to the 2x. And then when we distribute e to the x to here, the e to the x cancels, we just get 2. And then plus, and then 1 times e to the x, you get e to the x. So that cleared everything out. And then this is actually a quadratic type. You can move everything to one side. e to the 2x minus e to the x minus 2 equals 0. That's bringing everything to the left and putting it kind of like in a descending order. And do you all see if you made a substitution, this is not an integral, but we're making a substitution. We're replacing e to the x with, uh, with u. This becomes what? u squared. Right? We have to realize that that really means e to the x squared. So that's really like a u squared. And then minus u minus 2 equals 0. Then you factor this quadratic. Does this look familiar, everyone? Yeah. What's that? College algebra? Yeah. Like that. Then solve these. You get u is 2. And you get u is negative 1. And now at the very end, you, you replace u with e to the x. So e to the x equals 2. And e to the x equals negative 1. Remember, we're trying to figure out what x is, right? Oh, sorry, negative 1. Yeah, so you, you, to get the x um, out of the e, you have to bring in the natural log on both sides. So if you do natural log of the left side, you get x. And on the right side, natural log, you get natural log of 2. Here you get x when you do natural log on the left. And the natural log of, un of negative 1 is undefined. You can't put negatives in logs. So there's no solution to this equation. And there's one solution here. It's natural log of 2. So that's your lower limit of integration, natural log of